I'm just trying to get my mind, first of all, I'm just trying to get my mind ready for this. It's a problem. Because like when, when, once I, um, when I'm in a mood where it's like, what am I going to say? It's not good. So just give me a second. Okay, go ahead. Four. <laughs> Stop. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Three. Uh, go ahead. Two. two. Just go through it, even if I say stop. One. One, two, three. Everybody is free to be themselves. Oh. And you need to climb the hill to see the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do, di, da. I just wrote that. You couldn't figure out the song I was trying to. Uh, you, you, Clara does this, which, hey, Bob, you know this song? Hey, Bobby, this is in my head. You know this? Do, 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 Hey. And I'm like, what the fuck song is that? She always does that. Well, you do the exact same thing too. I'm making up a song. When I hum next to you, I'm making up a song that I'm making up on the spot. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, is that this song? Do, 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 I want to give you one more shot okay, go to ahead. figure it out. Can you do it for us so we can yeah. try to figure it out? Do you need to read my lips or do I need to face everyone? Or just do the do 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 part. Yeah. It goes like this. It's an 80s song. I think it's an OMD song. Orchestral Maneuvers of the Dark. But it goes we like know this. what OMD is. Okay. God. But for Gilbert, who's very young. You don't know born. what you, you I, don't know what OMD stands for? Say it again. What, what, what does OMD stand for? I said I don't know what it is. She just said it. So go tell me what it is. OMD? Yeah. I, I don't Have know. Have you heard of the band? No, I've never heard of the band. You never heard of the band OMD. I've never heard of the band OMD. You've heard songs though. If you had to play it, that's yeah. the only way I know. Oh my god, they, they, they have like twelve huge yeah. songs. Huge. You know it. I don't want to look. I want to hear you hum it first. We'll sing an OMD song. But this that is he a would more know. obscure one. Okay. OMD is if you leave, I won't hunt. I won't waste one single, single day. day. I've never heard that. Huh. I'm uh, telling you, Tesla right now, girls, Tesla girls. <laughs> You know that one? No. Um, what's this? There's so um. Hold on. <laughs> I've never heard of this band. No, you all oh, you got to telling you even on or, radio. Or, or, I don't. Breakfast Club. No, no, no. Is it the, is it the end song? No, the last song. <laughs> no, 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 no. I won't mind. This, this is this is right now blowing my mind right now. This is blowing my mind. I've never heard of the band. Now hold the on. tune's out of my head. No, sing the tune, babe. No, hold on. Okay, I gotta sing it before you play another song because it's gonna disappear. Oh, right, right. But it's an OMD song, I'm sure. I just don't know the. I think you can't play the music on this because, right? It'll get. No, you're good. It'll be it'll Hold be tagged or something. Is that what it what the deal is? Anyway, that's OMD, and the, and it stands orchestral maneuvers in the mm -hmm. dark. Also, by the way, it wasn't Breakfast Club. It was Pretty in Pink. That if you leave. Pretty in yeah, Pink. Yeah, yeah. Do this tune now. Oh God, now uh, there's too many. Okay, he goes. <sighs> Uh, okay, <laughs> here here we go. I only know four four notes. Are they called? Do notes? the tune. It goes. It goes. Yeah, you know what? I don't know what it is. Do you know it now? What is it? I already know it. It's OMD. It is OMD. Yeah, it's What's a good. It? But there's a lyric. It's not an instrumental. There is no, lyrics but the to beginning it. of yeah, the there song. is lyrics to it. But that's the mode. The cast and the and the uh, vocal goes. Na, 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 na. Yes, yes, yes. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. And then he goes back to it. Oh my god. You did earlier though. I did. Earlier today you were like, that's so different than what you just did. Earlier today you were like, hey, do you know this song? I'm like, no, I don't know that song. If you would have done that, I would have been like, I have to, I have to find it. I have right. to find uh, it. I'm so sorry, but you're gonna have to fucking wait until I find this OMD. Are you I, sure I, it's OMD? Swear to God. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier today, and I was like, I don't know that song, but um, it's crazy that she does that, you know? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said earlier. Do you have can to hear cut it. all of this out, George? No, I can hear it. Oh man. You have to take all of it out? Well, all the songs, or else YouTube will flag. Ah, bastards! Really, dude? Yeah. YouTube is changing, man. It's crazy. Even that that little clip, they'll they'll, they'll flag it. Um, I think anything over ten seconds. Okay, well, that we'll, was we'll, ten seconds. We'll, we'll, yeah, I'll we'll cut. shorten it to like. You should have done that beginning part. Then. I fucked up. You fucked up. 
I'll take out the beginning of it. I wasted time. Yeah, but that's not even a part of the song. That's like ambient, like air. Yeah. Oh, that'll catch it. Wow. Wow. YouTube is a wow. Can't have no Soviet, funds with the music. Soviet times now. So, thanks for the sponsor. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for yeah. You know, what else? Um, so um, I called David so earlier. That's why I asked for his number. Oh wow. Because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. With what? Well, yesterday, um, Day Kim, Day DDK, DDK, yeah. DDK, and some other ch- Chinamen, uh, Daniel Wu, yeah, him. Okay. Um, and you knew when when I said Chinaman, you knew who it was. Yeah, he's a fantastic, so, fantastic actor, actor, martial artist. Yeah. Anyway, they did a twenty five thousand, you know, reward for anyone that can inform somebody about. Something, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Do you think what it's a, a positive thing? What is going on? And then David So today <laughs> posted something on Instagram s- similar to that, saying, "I think you're the only Asian who." I know that's why I'm asking. That's why I didn't want to Google anything and look it up because I want to bring it up here on the podcast. Why wouldn't you want to Google it? But you know now. I don't know now. I I, I know that. So David, when I saw David So's thing, I go, <laughs> he goes. I, I don't know. He was in his car. And you know how he, when he gets serious, it's like it's a bummer. <laughs> like when David So gets serious, it's like all when right. The chubby cheeks turn into like piercing. No, but he just like he he looks. You know, he does his fingers like this, and he goes, "Yo, man, you know, let you guys know this is wrong." And, you know, and it's like just do the laughs, you fucking idiot. But anyway, <laughs> called him. He didn't even fucking pick up his fucking phone. This piece of shit. But apparently. Chinese people are getting beaten up in the streets. Not just Chinese. Yeah. Old, people, old people. Targeted. Targeted. Attacked. Are being on the attacked. rise. So then I looked back, went back to the Daniel D. Kim thing, and then um, they're putting it up a war to find somebody who beat up another Chinaman. Have you ever, have you seen any of the videos? No. They're horrible. One guy, old man, walking down the street. He was going on his morning g- walk. Morning walk. Some man, another man bef- mm-hmm. behind him, shoves him to the ground, or hits him in the head. Shoves mm-hmm. into the ground and just walks away. You talking that about this one? This is the this is this is brutal. Oh, that one. Did they find this guy? Uh, I'm not sure, Claude. Do you know if they found him? I know they got the one in Oakland that um, hurt the 85 that killed the 85 84 year old. Let me ask you watch, something. Watch. Oh and that person god. died. Oh my god! Why are they Family doing death. this? That person died. Why are they doing this? You know what bothers? Oh, me? this is the one in Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. Why are yeah. they doing it though? So this. Um, it's apparently there's a rise terrible. in in uh, targeted um, attacks on Asians um, since the um, oh, no. whole you know anti Asian re- rhetoric during the pandemic. Yeah, Here, here's uh, it's he, that's that man. Look at that oh man. my god, that's me. Here, Thirty years from now, here's my. I think that kind of bothered me a little bit. Yeah. was just the headlines that I'm seeing, which is like family of 84 year old uh, killed in SF believe attack was racially motivated. Yeah, it's interesting for me, like. It's always been a thing with Asians because there's so many different things happening right now where yeah. it's like the immediate answer is, yeah, that was racially motivated. Like uh-huh. It wasn't a direct thing to that. It's always like, well, yeah. let's see first with the Asians. It's because we're so... Right. I don't think we're as unified in groups to speak up mm. as much. So it's a little... And I feel people feel a little guilty too. Like I was talking uh, Clubhouse, just listening to a conversation. There has been like kind of proposed ideas of like there are some people or Asians, younger Asians that feel like they don't want to feel like they're not fighting for the anti-blackness first. Mm-hmm. And they're like conflicted, like, where do we put our my, my energy? Do I take care of my community first? Or does the anti-blackness help solve everything, like, in terms of more movement sense? So, mm-hmm. like, people are just, like, I feel like there's no unification of, like, this is fucked up. We should just, like... Whatever you know, it is. Well, well, whatever it is, the, the, the real thing is we are relying on race way too much in instances like this. It's mm-hmm. It's like, you know... This is an elderly man who's a human being. He's a grandfather. He's innocent. He's just walking down walking. the fucking street, right? And he was straight up murdered in fucking broad daylight, okay? It shouldn't be a racial um, in, in situation. But if the, if the police chief is saying that there has been a rise, we should... No, I know, I know, I know that there's been a ra- rise. Mm-hmm. Inevitably, even before the violence even it, it took place... When once, you know, Trump politicized, I know it's, it, he's out of office and I know you don't like me bringing it up, but once he started calling it Kung Flu and, you know, 
as soon as that rhetoric was coming out of him, you just kind of knew in your gut that there was going to be repercussions and people like, because the insane things that people think now, just a lo- just based on whatever whatever that administration was trying to put out there is insane. Obviously, you know, there was an insurrection, right, from his rhetoric, you know. Mm-hmm. So obviously there's going to be violence toward Asians, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. You know, I mean, I um, it just makes me so mad, and I don't even know why I brought it up. Well, what, why, did Daniel, comedy pop, why did Daniel Day Kim hit you up? What was he asking? Or? He wasn't asking me. Oh. They never. That's another thing that makes me mad. Is nobody asks me. Do you think that? Okay, here's <laughs> is that another I, I thing. That's, that's the real, never, that's the that's real the rage. Real re- Not that the video. real rage <laughs> is is that when like these you know when our people are being you know attacked you know or when there's some sort of ish political issue that needs mm-hmm. to be you know they then uh, then there needs there, there needs to be a voice. They never ask for my voice. Because my voice is not good. Well, that's because earlier you said you didn't even want to Google it. What? <laughs> I know because I didn't want to Google it because I wanted to learn while we were doing this Babe, podcast. There are far more reliable resources and sources than just me and Gilbert. I don't even know right now if we can even air any of this. Oh, yeah, we can. Come we on, can. let's move. This is hot. No, 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 yeah. honestly, because I'm, I I sound like a fucking idiot. Or you sound revolutionary. We no, that's not <laughs> I don't sound. Let it. I don't sound. Let it play out. Let history take its course. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. I don't sound revolutionary. I, I sound ignorant. You have the hair thing though, like. And I sound ignorant, you know. And I sound um, like I don't know. I'm grasping for words. Really quick, can I just? Have you seen the show Bridgerton yet? Yeah, of course. I saw a couple okay. episodes. You look like an Asian in Bridgerton. He looks like the queen. <laughs> it's legit. Um, by the way, I watched. Is she uh, half Asian? The queen. I, I kind of. It she looks like looks it. Asian, it looks right? southeast yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, in and of itself because you guys recommended oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Watched it earlier today just to watch it. Yeah. And I cried two p.m. Hmm. Did you really? I cried and I kept like, kept going like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, uh, it, yeah. I wasn't sobbing, but I was fighting back tears because there was something about I don't know how he he was able to translate live theater onto a fucking screen. Yeah. But I was like, shit. I feel like I was in the audience. Yeah. And uh Well if you if you watch it, it's it, it it's not just one night. They shot a week worth because yeah. it's different audience mm-hmm. members. So he's just wearing the same clothing. So that helps. Number two, Frank Oz directed it, mm-hmm. you know, who's like, you know, a legitimate director. Mm-hmm. And number two, Stephen Colbell produced it. So you're gonna get, you know, the he, it's one of those kind of shows where you can go we could shoot it as long as we need. There you was I mean? one part of it that took me out, though, and Which that was part? when it um, same thing that took you out. It took is me when out. you saw Bill Gates in the crowd. Oh, that I had to pause for a second. I was like, "Is the leader Bill Gates?" Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and instead of saying leader, say billionaire. I would have said billionaire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> billionaire, sit down. What are you doing here? That's yeah. what I, I think said. Larry Wilmore was in the audience too. And that. Oh yeah, so was Questlove. I was like, who are all these celebrities? Yeah, but I, if I would have known, that's another thing I'm mad like, about. I would have laughed. Another thing I'm mad about. I don't even know. See, that's where you're supposed to be. He did 521 shows. I know. I'm not even. I don't even. I'm not even aware of Bro, any of them. If you were in that audience, that would have destroyed. No, but somebody should have called me a year ago. I'm sure this happened a year ago, and said, "There's some great. There's a great one man show in New York, right? It, it's it's kind of life altering and changing. You should, you know, you should go. But no one ever calls me about that either. No one calls me about you know social justice stuff or fucking one man shows, man. Is that your brand, though? It just drives me crazy. In fact, if I think about it, no one calls me about anything. Do you think that's a racial attack? What? Do you think that's a racial attack? I think that's a racial attack. I mean, I was being shoved. I'm being shoved by people. Metaphorically. <laughs> metaphorically. Let's say it metaphorically, please. You know? Please say metaphorically. I am. I am. <laughs> please, please say it. Please. I am metaphorically. So, um. I have a question for you. Yeah. Your um, soup was the best. Remember when God shoved you outside of Super Bowl Jeep? Yeah, I remember that. And I wait, fell who, wait, who shoved him? Oh, yeah, I got shoved also at uh, Tulum. Yeah, no, because um, we've told wait. the story in like an earlier podcast, but I had to retell it to Annie today. Yeah. Um, when I was FaceTiming with her and um, we could not stop laughing about it. Or what my, what my brother said to me. Was it my brother? When yeah. I was in Tulum and yeah. I fell on the fucking concrete. Oh, the, the yeah. pig. And you're like a fat pig sla- you know, s- slapping your body on concrete Great. or whatever. And it was just like, <laughs> and I was in pain. I was in my, like I, the wind knocked out of me. Yeah. Right. And I'm on the, I'm embarrassed too. And it's raining too, correct? So I'm wet. Yeah. And my brother's saying it that mm-hmm. way. I, that still in my head. 
Yeah. Like every once a week, that'll play in my head. Do you know that you, you always talk about God shots yeah. and mm -hmm. those moments where you're like, oh, maybe there is a God outside of Sutbul Jeep <laughs> is when I, I maybe considered leaving atheism. <laughs> It's because you were you couldn't stop just going on and on to to your brother and I. You were like, "Come on, guys, think about it. If you really think about it, I am the Korean Elvis." <laughs> I never like, say if you that. Think about you all did, the why would I say history, that? That's ridiculous. You did, you did why would a human being? Why you were there? She told the story in depth. Yeah, but she could be a fibber. Oh, a fibber! I like that. Yeah, pretty good word. You guys really think about it. Okay, think about all the Asians. You started naming all the Asians. Like of all of them, wouldn't you say? I was kidding, I mean, obviously. And then we were, as okay, we ate with, we were eating Korean barbecue for a whole hour. He was giving his um, deposition. <laughs> yeah. And he was talking about how all all the reasons why he's Korean Elvis. And as we were walking towards the parking lot, he still was talking about how he was Korean Elvis. And there was like a chain link uh -huh. um, that he didn't see um, in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of his sentence, mm -hmm. God struck him down. As in the middle of saying Korean Elvis, he Bubble. trips over the chain link. Yeah. And he doesn't just land. He flies. He yeah. catapults into the air. Yeah, yeah. And then he plops into his pot belly. Uh -huh. And then he maybe like spins around a couple times. That's and funny. in that moment, I thought, oh, George, uh -huh. I laughed so hard. Uh -huh. It took me an hour to peel my body off of that <laughs> Koreatown cement. Mm -hmm. Every time I thought I could maybe sit up, sit up and maybe take a breath, I would fall back to <laughs> laughing so hard. Mm -hmm. God shot. God shot. Mm -hmm. who, who would be considered the Korean Elvis? Uh, uh, not me. Okay, let's. Okay. Yeah, I would say the Korean modern Elvis. Modern day, yeah. Modern day Korean Elvis would be um, probably. BLM, not, not BLM. Yes, the B movement. BSK. What are they? <laughs> the movement BLM. No, no, no. Yeah. What's the what's the? Korean? Oh, BT. <laughs> <laughs> no one calls you about social justice. Yeah. Or what is it? The other thing, dude. La one yeah. man shows. Uh -huh. Hey guys, we're gonna take a really quick break to share some of our favorite sponsors with you. Roman. Oh, Roman. <laughs> so Roman. Valentine's Day is coming up, and for a lot of guys. That can mean added pressure to perform. Luckily, with Roman, you can relax. So if you're dealing with ED, Roman's got you covered, baby. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. A healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman or Roman will ship <laughs> it right to you with free two-day shippings. Tell them more, babe. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. One less thing you have to worry about on V-Day. For limited time, get up to $35 off your first month of ED treatment. Order by 210 for guaranteed delivery by Valentine's Day. Just go to GetRoman.com slash belly to get started. That's GetRoman.com slash belly. Stitch Fix. Fix. You guys, I got a package of Stitch Fix. <laughs> Stitch Fix the other day. And it, it's fun. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Um, you, you send them your measurements and your size, mm -hmm. right? And they send you a bunch of clothing, mm -hmm. right? And then you pick through the clothing they send you and then you return the ones that you want. And I picked out like three or four things, right? You keep the ones you want. Yeah, yeah but the ones, when I got a package, I remember I picked about three things. With the blue and it was button perfect. down, yeah. It was really perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really fun. Online shopping can be daunting. Am I not correct or correct? Correct. correct. You never know if things will fit. Returns are difficult. And you don't even know what store to start with. This season, this season, let's Stitch Fix do all the hard work. As the days get longer and the weather gets colder, it may be time to take a look at your winter wardrobe. If you want to make a change this season, Stitch Fix can help you choose new pieces you love. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected to expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's an easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel the best. Try on pieces at home before you buy. Keep your favorites and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and exchanges, and prepaid return envelopes included. Mm. There's no subscription required either. 
Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep anyway. So Guys, it's no really fun to ever. try. I would try it because it's like mm -hmm. when I, I when I actually opened the package, it was exciting to go through all the stuff that they mm -hmm. chose. And it's and, available for women, men, and kids. Yeah, and Tell even smaller people. Yeah. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash belly, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash belly for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash belly. Enjoy the rest of the show. I can't. The hot, oh, BTS, babe. BTS. Um, can we go back to the soups? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, we well, we can't we can't reveal it because it's going to be on our Patreon, Patreon. but we yeah. can sort of talk Come about on, it. Did you tell him who made the soups beforehand? No. Oh, but he knew which one mine was, and he retaliated. This is a very this is retaliated. The All right, so <laughs> retaliate. He did uh, something. It, yeah, I did something, but it was it was revenge. Uh, and I cried. I, I'll, about I'll tell it. you. I'm going to tell you what the revenge is. Oh man, she cried, and I was I feel bad about it, and I, you know what. I'm a piece of shit. Let's just throw that out there, you know? And, and no re no no wonder people don't call me about things, okay? Um so we had a soup soup competition last night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you it was made, a tiger belly. A soup. Was yeah. that fresh or it was it canned? No, we all had to make it. We so all you had made to a make it. I didn't know that you could cook. Gilbert, Have you cook? seen what? my hips? Okay, that's <laughs> congratulations. My hips. Your hips are and then George can cook, obviously. We don't give the results. I'm not going to. All right. Already, just by visually, I could probably, I right, I got it right. You got it right. Just yeah, visually. Just visually. I can tell George is visually. Yeah. And um, George so, did it. So uh, let's go back. A little, let's go back a little bit. So let's go back maybe a couple of days. Well, yeah, I, I need to go back. Um, this goes deep. It man. goes deep. So Friday. <laughs> So Friday, um, you know, I was, you know, I'm up for a movie right now and I'm paranoid about my acting skills. Yeah, I just get that way, you know. And um, so Friday night, I don't watch Magnum P.I., but um, mm -hmm. my cousin um, Eddie, my friend Bess Hanley from New York and Eric Stone Street. They just happened to watch it. I don't know why. I didn't tell them to watch it. And they all texted me saying, um, great job, great job, great job. In fact, um, Eric said he's something extra is saying, you know, great job. And I would know I won an Emmy. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and, and then he sent me a photo of, with him in an Emmy. Classic. <laughs> Which made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So then, um, so I go, oh, you know, let me see it. So I go on Instagram and you know how people tag you on stories and stuff obviously right and then so there were some clips that people had tagged me in that some scenes of, uh, of magnum mm -hmm. so i watched them and you know for me to what because I, I i can see all the imperfections mm -hmm. like uh, that's me rolling my eyes whenever i roll my eyes i'm trying to remember a line <laughs> Don't so if you're in a i know i'm just gonna reveal it right so what right when you when you're watching me act and i'm rolling my eyes it's me going What's the line? And then here's a second thing that I do. When I look away, I do it for dramatic effect. Mm. But it's just so amateurish. So I'll have a, I'll, I'll be in a scene and I'll have a conversation with you. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, Olene, I just, you know, and I'll just do this. I'll look away. You know what I mean? Because I think that that's natural or something, but it mm -hmm. looks amateurish. But so I'm watching some scenes and I go, I'm trying to convince myself it's good. I go, yeah, that's a real good moment. So I go, Kalila. Right, I, Kalila, look at these scenes. So I show her a scene, and she's and when she well, no, no first, no. I, first, this is what I said. Please do not show me anything. I am not an acting coach. No, you said that afterwards. I, you babe, said it after you saw over it. the years. I <laughs> have, you saw, but no, you listen, said that after. I know. I, let me I, just, the reason I said it afterwards is over the years I have begged him. I know it's because it's when you know someone so well, it's hard to kind of see them objectively if they're good in an acting. So scene I look. Or not. So I give her the. So we watch it and. When she doesn't like something, she does this. Like she's trying to smile, but it's not fully. Yeah. And it, I can see her fucking wheels turning. That's my favorite Kyla. Right. Face. So she's just like, you know, you know what I mean. And then she sees a scene and she goes, "It's pretty good," something like that. And I go, "Well, you didn't like." I already knew she didn't like it. And she's like, "It's it's okay." <laughs> That's what she said. It's okay. And I go, 
oh yeah, it's okay, right? And she's like, yeah, I mean, you've done so much better before. <laughs> but that's also like, you know, that these are all like, you know, it's masking, right? It's like what she, she's. These are things that to make me. So in my head, I'm like, these are the words she's saying to ease, you know, what I mean, my pain, right? Imagine what she really feels. That's not true. I, right? That, it's that, it, her. What she mm -hmm. really feels is. It's fucking terrible. What did they, did they only let you do one take? That's you why would you put those words in? I'm just saying mouth? that's in my head, right? That's on you. Yeah, <laughs> but that's on that's not on me. I know. First of all, that's I didn't say it was okay. I was like, look, I've seen you knock it out of the park, and I've also seen you do really bad. I was like, this is good. This is good, but it it's not okay. your best. Yeah. He hears it differently, and for the rest of the day, he is not that nice to me. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing these things. I'm doing like I curl up in a ball. Like I'll literally go in a field position, yeah, on a couch, and I'll just lay there for hours, and just think. It's, I have it's terrible. I have begged him not to put that type of responsibility on me. She did. She did that, but to me one time before I was on the road, right? See, he remembers it because it really affects him. That's why I said I do not ask me because I know I'm just gonna just say this. Though. I'm too close to you to give you. And also, I'm not a fucking acting expert. I don't know anything. So, I was on the road when the first episode of Love. You know what I mean? Was being uh, uh, that was on Netflix, and yeah, and I remember this. So I get a text from Paul Rust or somebody going, "Dude, that scene is so real. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? What a great scene. I think maybe David King or somebody just had texted me. So I felt pretty good about it. She saw it and she goes, "Yeah, it's not good." <laughs> and I remember being because it was next to a comedy club and there was a movie theater in between. So I was up against this like alleyway where there was like a weird like movie poster, you know, with the with the lights around it. Right. And I was underneath it, crouched like this with my cell phone. And she's like, yeah, it's just not good. You got to take acting classes or whatever. You know, what I mean, and it's like you're not in the scene and whatever. And I just remember going, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> why would why would you listen to me over? But that's what I love about her, because she's I don't like, you know. I, I guess previous girlfriends that I would have, right, would have said everything that I did was good just to make me feel better. So nothing felt authentic. So when she says it's good, I just know it's, she's being honest, right? So this is, I guess, at the end of the day, what I want out of her, right? But still, it's very difficult. Why did you retaliate on my soup? So what so was anyway, the retaliation? Now, now cut to the soup competition. <laughs> three days after. Three this. days after. Hey, this is three days. Magnum yeah, 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 yeah. Dude. Magnum revenge. Oh my god! So I'm sitting there, and I know which one's hers. Mm -hmm. The re reason being is be before even tasting it, is because there's freshly sprinkled bacon. But also, I have mm. made this soup over the years, and I know that he loves this soup. I love smart, soup. smart move. So it's you know none of you guys had your, none of your soups had freshly stuff mm. fresh stuff on it. She had put this beautiful bacon bits on top of it. Right? Sounds good. So I already knew, and I also have had her soup before, so I know what it looks like. So it, before even testing, I go, "That one's the last place." <laughs> you're, you're such an <laughs> asshole. And she worked in my head. She worked all day. And on she it. put toppings on. I, it? I know. Fresh in toppings? my head, I'm looking at the soup, and I'm like, Come on. "For sure, last place." Before even tasting it. Yeah. So I went to. I don't want to give it away. So I yeah. went to all the soups. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we know now hers is the last place. Yeah. So I, you know, ate all of your soups, right? And. uh I said incredible things about your soups, even though I hated it. Yeah, yeah I, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I go, this one's a masterful <laughs> class, or whatever I said, right? And then um, I went to hers. I said, it, it's bland. You know what I mean? It's I mean, terrible. the words that he used to describe soul my soul crushing soup soul was crushing. soul crushing. To, as somebody who likes to, you oh, guys, yeah. I don't just soup is my thing. Like I have an immersion blender that I got for my birthday that I have wanted for years because I like making soups. So when he said that, oh my God. And and I was sitting there, I'm like, I'm not fragile. I'm not fragile. Take the hit, Kalila. I'm not fragile. Yeah. So I just nodded and smiled. I'm like, this is okay. I can take this. I can take this. Did but you know what he was doing <laughs> in the moment? But later on, I asked him, oh, oh, when I fell asleep, all I heard was the fridge open and him pouring a big fucking <laughs> thing of soup of my soup that I made. I ate a whole... I ate a whole fucking gigantic jar of her soup. Already and then afterwards, night. he was like, I'm so sorry. It was really fucked up. And I'm still really angry revenge. about the Magnum P.I. thing. Yeah, yeah, Wow. Yeah. All that. Because, you have, because um, 
But go watch the soup challenge on Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Patreon.com slash Tiger Belly. Yo, watch the Patreon and then um also um don't watch the Magnum from last Friday. But although you can I I'll be honest with you, can okay. I I mean, I'm getting a lot of good responses from it, so I don't know what to believe. They believe them. Believe the directors. Believe everybody who who you worked with. Trust them. Mm -hmm. I'm I I'm too close to you. Yeah. I'm not. I can't see. Yeah. But now, with all that being said, right? Because I'm now analyzing this whole story that we just talked about with the soup and the Magnum PI, and now I'm stepping aback, aback from it, and analyzing it and looking at it, right? It makes me sound like a really bad person. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I step back from it, I just analyze it. It's it, no, I'm being real. I right? know you are. So I'm like, this is unlikable, right? <laughs> this is what is wrong with this person. It won't test you know what well. I mean? It does not test. So well. is this who I am? <laughs> you have to ask yourself. That. No, I'm asking you. A bad person? No. Yeah, no. but but by you know, it, does this make me a what? What, what are you? If okay, go ahead, George. Oh, no, I was, it made me super happy because I was like, at least my soup didn't get last place. So you no one's... Uh, you somebody. fucking narcissistic fuck. <laughs> that was your whole that, thing That's from your this. whole fucking thing. Take away from it. I'm asking <laughs> you a question. What does it look... So you, th it doesn't make me look weird. I've just been feeling great this whole time ever since I learned I didn't get last place. So I've kind of been like floating on cloud. Oh, okay. How about you? My assessment of this yes. is... You did a great analysis of yourself. And you even called yourself out right now. I don't think there's... a a moral landscape to this per se, but I would maybe use the standard of how your partner feels from the actions as maybe a barometer. So I point the question back to you. Mm. I think I saw a movie in a movie once, either Woody Allen movie or one movie where, you know, one of the, there's, it's a couple, one of them had written a script, the other one had written, wrote, read it. Okay. And then it was giving the other guy feed, the other partner feedback. And it's just being honest and saying it's not good, right? So I just think that, you know, that's, you know, her looking at some of my work and saying that it's not good at all, right, is healthy, right? No, that is. This is literally... Yeah, as long as I'm not an asshole about it. Like, that, there is, so there is the a line, though. putting your soup last place is not healthy. No, it's not that I... I didn't care if I came in third, but you went on to trash the soup. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You spent ten because minutes I needed to get some calling form it all revenge. sorts of names. Right. So that's what that's the, the so revenge I part. Later. When I step up, when I step away from the story again, right, <laughs> and I look at that part of it, right, it makes me go, "Oh, that's weird." And so this is my, of course, me because I'm like, "Don't be fragile, Kalila. Don't be fragile. Yeah. You can take a loss because you know me and competitive competition does you're you're not yeah. go. You're hand very in competitive. Hand. Yeah. And but then I'm like, look. Like we all the soups were delicious. Third place is fine. So I was sitting there. I was like, Aww. and I was crying because um, and he was right there. I was like, it's it's not. I'm okay with third place. It's just I'm not okay with you saying it was Vegas buffet style soup. <laughs> that's Vegas, what it. That's the, that's the nail. We call it Vegas, Vegas buffet, buffet style. quality. And then I just could not. I I called everyone about I mean. it. Because he goes and be like, oh, yeah, this is the shit that you, you, they, they feed like fucking pigs. You know, like he just goes on and on. <laughs> yes, and. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and. Yeah. So um, if I'm looking back at the whole thing now, um, it's just something to improve on, I guess. Revenge, you know, it's yeah. not to retaliate in that way. And then maybe I should have, let's just analyze it. Maybe I should have when she was giving me some acting notes and go um, and say, I heard what you said. It still hurt my, hurt my, hurts my feelings. Because I don't express myself, right, in those situations. What I absorb it, right? I keep quiet about it. And then I just kind of, you know. Comes out in different ways. No, but I also, I just, I just think about it and I, I sit in it. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like a pool, a cesspool. But right? yeah. you probably only feel defensive when the critique is about acting. Because I feel like she says other things and you're like, whatever. Because I feel like. Yeah, right? it's very, he's it's specific something... to acting. Yeah, I, acting. You know, I'll tell you why acting is. Um, I'm sensitive about it because you know, um, number one, that's not the school that I came from, right? It's like you know, I started at dirty comedy clubs and I wrote jokes and I performed, right? And then all of a sudden, you come to LA and then it's like you know, you can do this. You know, here's an opportunity, 
And I've always I love watching movies and I love TV shows and I, I've always loved both those um, not genres but uh, what do you call it um, mediums, right? And um, so I go, you know, so when I started doing it, you know, and uh, auditioning the whole thing, right? You know, the whole time, like when you're doing a scene with a real credible person, right? Like I don't, I hate to bring this up, but like when I was doing it with. I did it with Ben Kingsley once, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In The Dictator. Mm -hmm. So when you're, and, and you're, and I love Ben Kingsley, right? He was in Gandhi, right? He was in Sexy Beast, one of my oh favorite movies. Oh my God, movies. such a good movie. One of my favorite movies. He's like a, he's a fucking amazing actor. One of the best in the world, right? And I'm now in a scene with him, right? And you, you have the things that go through my mind is like, oh my God, he, the one thing that goes through my mind is he, he knows, he sees through me. Like, those are just things that I think about. Yeah. yeah. Like, he knows I'm not an actor. You know what I mean? And it's like, and I don't know if it's stuff that I have to work out in therapy, you know? And, you know, um, but you know what? Uh, ultimately, what ends up happening is just do your job. You know, to shut my brain down, I just, just do it. Yeah. So I do it. And, you know, and it's always fine. And, you know, at, I, I fly back to L.A. or whatever. And, you know. It, it's a good response or whatever it might be you know what I mean so it's generally good but still I go through like this fucking I torture myself well you're gonna keep mm -hmm. doing it anyway yeah, right that's what she says like so it's like if this is something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life you're gonna commit to the idea that you're gonna nail some and you're gonna lose some also I've done it a lot yeah it's not like I've done it one time I've done it hundreds and hundreds of times so it's like in legitimate things so it's like you're gonna show up you're gonna do your best yeah. and that's all but I'm just not gonna go would check this out to my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably the best I think that's the best thing thing moving yeah, forward. yeah from now but on this is where I get a little sensitive is because when I'm like working on stuff and like um, I feel really passionate about it and I really am in in need of good critique like I'm like how can this be better how can this he is like, it's so good, it's so good, it's gonna make it, you're gonna sell it, you're gonna do this, and I hate that. I'm just like, no, I need you to literally pick it apart. And I see that as more dismissive. I don't wanna take the time to- No. To, no, to, now you're gonna make me, you're making me angry. No, but that's how I take it. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you how, I'll tell, I'm gonna tell you the honest truth of it, okay? Yeah. It's, um, you know, when, like, I've had girlfriends where they said, I've had some that's that were just regular people that said, I want to be an actress. Right? And you go, oh, and then you want to be like, so you you go, you try to help them, right? But it's like, there's, it only goes to a point, right? My help, right? It's like, I just verbally say it. But, with, quickly, but with you, go well, go ahead, what? I'm going to defend all your ex-girlfriends, though, before you say that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and assume they didn't just say, I want to become an actress. Because when I first met you, the one thing that in the first three months you would do when you were still love bombing me is you would make such a good stand-up comic. You would be such a great actress. Why don't you do commercials? Why don't you do this? And you put all these ideas in people's heads. And they, you really feel that like, oh my God, this oh, person no. really believes uh -oh. in me. Uh -oh. So no. if I were to call Christine <laughs> okay, or if I were to call your exes, here I can promise go. you they didn't They didn't just here, wake up and say, I'm going to be an actress. This might not be arable here. Here we go. You put that shit in their okay, head. Is go. that true? Okay, I, I, just sit back down, George. Tell the truth, George. Sit back down, George. Not George, Bobby. <laughs> sit back down, George. George, tell the truth right. about Bobby. Tell the truth, Bobby. Okay, so let's now get, now let's get to the real. This is where it's not, it's going to stop getting funny. And this is going to start, it's going to start The real getting, world. This is the, the real, real world. world. Okay, Los here we go. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're and done. Uh, no, let me explain myself though. Okay. All right. And now we're gonna we're we're going down a shameful past. Don't let it and be a shameful. shameful history. Don't let it be shameful. It is shameful. Just explore. I am I, I am exploring with my words, okay? okay. So here it is, okay. <laughs> oh, how do we get to okay, so yes. There I was always a guy that was so I had a difficult time meeting women and getting women to like me, especially in my 20s, okay? Yeah, I would beg. There were times where I would beg, and I, I'm ashamed of it. 
because I was always kind of like little, right? And a little, you know what I mean? Quirky and, you know, eccentric, you know, in just in terms of, you know me. I giggle when I'm not supposed to. I'm just a weird guy, energy-wise, right? So when I was young, you know, I would like, you know, um, do everything I could so that I can get somebody to like me, right? And when I got a... Oh God, this is so embarrassing. And we're never going to... We might have to cut this part out. This is so embarrassing. So there was this waitress. I've never said this before. And and this is so shameful. But there was this waitress named Michelle B***. Mm-hmm. And she was a waitress at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Mm-hmm. Then she, she was cute. And she moved to L.A. Yeah. And I think she liked me. I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. But she started hanging out with me. And this is when I started making money, right? And I would bombard her with gifts. Mm-hmm. But I would say, I can buy you shoes. I can buy you whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Just, just, and I, she, I, she had already liked me, right? But it got to the point where one, she's like, we were in the car and she goes, you know, I, I, I'm beginning to think that you think I'm a prostitute and, <laughs> and, and like, I'm not a whore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What the fuck are you doing? And she starts screaming at me. Yeah. Right? You can't fucking buy my love, yeah. you piece of shit. And I never saw her again. Yeah. I literally never saw her again, right? And then, so I would do that, and I also would do mm-hmm. stuff like, you know, feed into somebody's, like, you know what I mean? Blow smoke up their ass. Yeah, smoke, blow smoke up their ass, mm-hmm. right? So um, those are two things that I did because of, you know, I just didn't have the skills or tools or, or the self-esteem um, to believe that somebody to believe that would somebody like, would like me you. for who I was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, and as I get older, I, I don't care as much. So I feel like that that helps. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I really don't care as much at all. Almost, you know. So it's like, um, but yeah, it is something that I do and I did, and I'm ashamed of it. I think that's really kind of um, relatable, it's probably. It's terrible. That was that's so relatable, and I have the the same story as that girl when just being like gifted so many things. My very very first boyfriend did the same thing. Like he would, he wouldn't. He tried to buy my family's love because he 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 was realizing that I was mind you, I was only thirteen years old. He was way older. It was so inappropriate. He was like eighteen, but he came from like a really wealthy family. And he would, every time um, he could feel me sort of like, hey, this is, I don't want to have a boyfriend. Like, I'm really young. He could feel me pull away. He would show up to the house with just like cartons of mango. <laughs> like, like because, yeah. but mango is like, you know, especially when it's in season, it's like, there's no better gift. Um, and he would take all my cousins. We all live in the, in, in the same house. He would take my cousins on joy rides. He would bring um, his fancy American cars. At that time, like the Jeep Cherokee was like not, he, he, he owned the only Jeep Cherokee on the island. Wow. Ooh. And he would have my cousins um, joy ride. And um, everyone would be like, oh, you can't break up with him. He's like the nicest guy ever. And that's when I was like, oh, this guy is really trying to, by my affection and i was so i got the ick after that when you get the ick there's no coming back from the ick yeah there's nothing he could have bought or done for me that could have solved my ick for him i was out i was like this is disgusting i need to get out and my family did not speak to me for a long time you're like you fucked up a good thing and i'm like i'm 13 wow. how yeah. are you guys not seeing this i mean very very dysfunctional but yeah yeah um Although I have to say, when I was dating Sarah Highland, not the one from Modern Family, there's a comedian version of her, Sarah Highland, <laughs> yeah. who's very funny. The funnier version. She of also her. auditioned for SNL, right? But yeah. when Sarah would ask for things and stuff, it was easy for me to go, "Yeah, I'll help you," because I just knew, right, that she had everything that it took. Mm-hmm. She's know, talented. To make, she's a really talented, funny girl. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there are times, but there are times where, you know I mean, especially in the beginning, I would do things to get somebody to like me, you know what I mean? And I, but now looking back at my behavior, I, I, I'm shameful at, at it. And this, you know, this whole episode is shameful. This whole podcast, it, it's, it's, a lot of my character defects are glaring. 
in front of me. No, those are th- things you've had to work through and you've grown up. You, you don't do that anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I know. But let's get back to you not giving me proper critique. I'm somebody, in, in order for me to believe <laughs> that you're, you're actually caring about what I'm doing, I need you to point out where I need to improve. And you don't do that. You're just like, it's so good, it's so good, get out of my face. That's fine. You know what I mean? Okay, the particular thing that you were working on, right? Yeah. I 100% read it. I love it. And I literally think that it's going to be a thing. I, I don't know how else I have to tell you that. There is no other way to do it. And and there are other people interested in it. There, and why I know it's going to be a thing is because other people, you know what I mean, including people that I believe in, you know, that work for me personally in my own business, right? is going, no, this thing is great, right? So that's how I fucking know. So I don't know what else I have to tell you about it. It's great. And I'm telling you that out loud. It's great. And it's going to be a thing, okay? So um, that's it. I don't, don't mark that. Please don't mark that. <laughs> don't mark that. I'm going to listen to this one. That's got to be in it. All right? Got it's that fucking great. I know, but then now I just sounded like I was really fishing for a compliment. Yeah, but this whole thing is making me sound weird. <laughs> whole thing making me sound I know, weird. I know. This whole episode, all, all the things that we're talking I about, I'm like, it, oh my God, I sound so fucking I keep fucked looking, up. I keep looking and over so it's at like, George. If we're going to keep my shit in there, we're keeping your shit in there too. All right? I know. So either we do this over again no, man. or we keep going. You know what I mean? The best part is every two seconds. As I take a step back, what just happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going too deep, babe. What? As I were going too deep, I just felt I just honestly. I've right been that feeling second, like this the whole fucking episode <laughs> of like, I don't want that out there. Why am I saying that? I know, but I now feel. Don't gross. mark anything. I I now feel gross for like forcing you I've to like, for- say something nice. <laughs> I know. I feel gross. That, what What are you marking? We're not marking. I just it just no, no, you I'm, guys are speaking of both uh, Kalila being famous and things that are weird. Yeah. I found a great article on Kalila online at uh, Tuco. What is it? AR? <laughs> Tuco. It's a very, what the, what? They're a very well known publication. Uh, so they're Kenya News. Oh wait, this isn't. It's in Kenya. It's in Kenya. Yeah. So just read through Kenya's everything. Be hot. In this. Oh my god, I'm a heroin addict. <laughs> no, no. Let's start at the top, Gilbert. Gilbert, <laughs> we got to start. We got to read the whole thing. Go ahead. Why don't you guys read it? The thing about being a pos is pretty far fetched, not too distant past. Right now, you have to admit that they have entered into the air of podcasting prominence as famous personalities <laughs> are launching their own shows. <laughs> so, you were actually a famous celebrity before Tiger Belly. Just keep that in mind. When Bobby said you were a celebrity, you were. Um, Colin is one of the podcast hosts who's carved a niche for herself on YouTube. This, what, what was this picture? You guys, let's be clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kalila Kuhn hitched. Hitched her entire everything onto Bobby's wagon, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I became. I created a niche. I said, "Oh, Bobby's." Wow. Kyla Rosa Rosa started when she started hosting a video podcast named Tiger Belly YouTube. She became more famous when she got married <laughs> yes, yeah. to Bobby Lee, a famous actor. You are famous, a comedian. Oh man, the best Ugh. is like all the information. That oh, my age is wrong. You gotta, you gotta go through all of it, Gilbert. Read everything. Read, read it, man. My age is wrong. I can't see it. Thirty. Your birthday's wrong. Birthday. Uh, my height is wrong. Is Bobby's your information correct? Five six. Bob, I'm not gonna Bob, dispute that weight. That sounds pretty I'm good. Five four. Fifty five kg. <laughs> so my professional media. is social media personality YouTube. YouTuber. That's you, Bobby. That's You're my a YouTuber. <laughs> You're a YouTuber. Uh-huh. You're a YouTuber. Yeah, there she is again. I was born October 31st, so that is incorrect, right? Incorrect, correct, yeah. yes. And the name of her mother is Marta, <laughs> which is crazy that they know that. They know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's all, like, public info. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, she's born a family, an American father and a <laughs> yeah. Filipino mother. Yeah. That's Tolstoy and Baltazar, my baby. Uh, she grew up in her hometown in Subaru with her, with her sister, <laughs> Juliana. <laughs> Jules is going to be so upset. She's going to be angry. Uh, <laughs> later on, her family really got to the United States. She became American National <laughs> for education role at Cebu International School. Later on, she went to college where she majored in biochemistry. Mm, that's right. Uh, when she was a child, Claude dreamt of becoming a doctor one day. Uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know when you ever said any of this stuff. She was a child looking for wounded birds, chicks, and frogs. That's on my and, Instagram. And yeah. Okay. Yeah, she started working as a tutor, teaching subjects like anatomy, microbiology. That's correct. That's correct. Most of this is pretty correct, yeah. though, right? All this, I just thought this was interesting right here. Was uh, oh, that was my first, the first time I ever did a podcast was that picture right after. Look how depressed I look. This was what podcast? 
That's DVD ASA. That was right the first time I ever did it. Yeah. That's how frightened I was. Oh, no. Oh. That's sweet. Thank you, Tuco. Then, Wait, the, Kalila the, Brendan Schaub issue? The best part is this. Who is Kalila? Okay, Kalila's married. She's a married woman. She's married to her longtime boyfriend, Robert Young <laughs> Lee <laughs> Jr. Family is known as Bobby, Bobby Lee. He is famous for his appearances in films such as Harold and Kumar, Go to White Castle, uh, Pilot <laughs> Express, Dictator, and many others. The couple met on Tinder and dated for several years. Here's where it gets great. The two first started by exchanging text messages before setting up a meeting. Unlike most celebrities, they chose not to publicize the relationship <laughs> for reasons well known to them. Whatever that's what he yeah. well known to oh, them. Oh, a second, a second date, he posts pictures of my shiny tits, okay? Yep. Uh, Bobby Lynn Clyde exchanged vows in August 2016 at a You remember that, bear? <laughs> I did. I told New you York. I did that. I told you I did that. <laughs> she and her husband do not have any kids, but they have several pets together. Oh, wow. This wow. Is, what is, what's a Kalila Brandon Schaub yeah, issue? In 2019. Uh, go ahead, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Schaub confessed that Kalila was beautiful and attractive, that he could not understand why she was attracted to Bobby. She texted Kalila. She texted Kalila on Twitter, and they talked about athletics. Bobby Lee became mistrustful of Brendan after he saw the text. <laughs> <laughs> Who? That never happened. <laughs> where is all this? I don't know where this research is from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you guys are on this. Uh, I guess is that a, is it Kenyan? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting what's on the internet about you guys. People definitely think you guys are married for sure. 100%. Yeah, people say that. Tuco.co.ke. This is so funny. Yeah, so you are a celebrity. In Kenya. That's Thank good. the Lord. They have really great journalism there. Who would have thought? 2016. <laughs> I don't even know what would have made them think you guys got married in New York. Oh, the wedding you went to. No, that was last year. I Only a year and a half ago. But you guys don't know what, what status Bobby and I are. Oh. Uh, we don't. After that one episode, we have no idea. Yeah, you'll never know. You'll never know. Hey guys, we're going to take a really quick break to share some of our favorite sponsors with you. Better help. You guys, um, Kalila and I, and all, all the, all the people that dwell in this house um, during the pandemic have um, accessed better help. Mm -hmm. And we need it, it. Therapy has saved our lives here in the pandemic. Um, you know, I, I'm working on my trauma. Kalila's working on her issues. And uh, even Juju in the house, Juliana, has done some better help. And it's really a great service. Um, what interferes with your happiness? Do you know? Is there something preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And it connects you in a safe and private online environment. And it's so convenient. Tell them more. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. You can send a message to your counselor anytime. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Um, this service is available for clients worldwide. Um, licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, anxiety, stress, relationships, sleep, Grief. trauma, LGBT matters. matters. Anything you share is confidential. It's very convenient. It's super professional. And more import most importantly, it's very affordable. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Tell us more about it, Gil. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash belly. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash belly. Hello, Fresh. Oh. Hello, Fresh. Yeah. Hello, Fresh. Papa. <laughs> you guys, um... You know, I, there's nothing more exciting than get HelloFresh uh, fresh packages. Delivered to our door. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because it's, I, I automatically know I'm going to have a good meal. It's a meal that I can pre prepare myself. Mm -hmm. And um, it just really is, um, I, I, we love the service. Um, HelloFresh Hello cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. HelloFresh offers 23 recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. To try out America's number one meal kit, go to HelloFresh.com slash 10belly and use the code 10belly for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 
10 belly and use the code 10 belly for 10 free meals including free shipping enjoy the rest of the show so, uh so we have some videos that we some people sent in not too many but uh just telling a, a story uh-huh. from valentine's day because valentine's day is coming up and then you guys can just like i guess choose who had like the most entertaining story and they only had 90 seconds to share it we'll go hey bobby kalila george um gilbert uh, so my story, Valentine's story, is was the reason why I think I hate Valentine's Day. Um, so I was like 22 years old, um, fell in love with this one girl, and I went to go buy her a, like a, a watch with a diamond on it. And it was like the first diamond that I've ever bought in my life. So, um, you know, I'm all excited. I got, get to the store and, you know, I'm... Um, pretty jazzed about it and then I come to find out on Valentine's Day when I give it to her that she cheated on me and uh, we broke up on Valentine's Day so and the worst part was is that when I went back to the store to return it and I was just like devastated um I went to go return it and then the same lady that sold me the watch was uh person taking the return and she was just like oh she didn't like it and i was like bawling in front of this place oh um but yeah that was my valentine's story i thought i thought the story was gonna go <laughs> and the same one. lady said no refunds <laughs> <laughs> you know, i told you yeah, i told you already you know what i mean no, no refund read the sign stop crying <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so well it, uh, to me that's a happy story because at least he got his money back yeah, money back and you dodged found out, a cheater. Right, dodged a cheater. Yeah. Right, and um, I, that that was a happy story. Yeah, Good ending. yeah. Have any of you guys been cheated on? Yes. On Valentine's Wait, Bobby, Day? have you ever been cheated on? I don't think he ever has. I no. don't think he's ever been dumped. Or do you secretly think you are, so you immediately end the relationship yourself because you're like quick like that? I don't think I care. Oh well, that's not good either. Not, yeah, yeah. I think you're supposed to care about the relationship you're in. Right? <laughs> I don't think I would care. Yeah, I don't think I would care. We, ca- I, we have been, him and I have been rejected a lot. But I don't think, I, I've, I've been cheated on, but I've never been dumped. Not, just cheated not on. Not on Valentine's Day. Right, we have one more? Go. Because if I would, no, this is bad backup. So let, let's think about a relationship I was in. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So one time, I was dating this girl named Amy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I, Poor George, as they keep bleeping things. <laughs> and and I was flying to Italy or something for something, not Italy, f- France, to shoot a IBM commercial. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was at a bar with a bunch of people, and I turn around and I look down this alleyway, and I see a guy holding Amy's hand, and she's like pushing it away. And he's doing th- like you know, like doing this, like so caressing. And it. she's like kind of yeah. like moving away from him like this. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, I remember just feeling joy that it was over. Oh, why when she didn't do anything wrong? But you could tell that she was with this guy. Oh no. Oh. Too. Why did I mean? you feel joy? I don't know. Let's go to the next video. <laughs> okay. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Happy Let's Valentine. Happy Valentine. Happy Valentine. Hang on one second. Yeah. <laughs> Suppress it. You're gonna you're gonna dislike that I remember this story about you and her that you told me. Okay, go ahead. You were about to leave for France or Germany or wherever the hell that IBM commercial was. Yeah. And it was your final night together, and um, you went to dinner with your manager and your agent, okay. and you didn't invite her, and she she cried. Okay. So here's what happened. Okay. This is the truth, and I, I, I'm so, I am so fucked, the bum that you even remember that. So now I have to, now I have to redo this story. <laughs> so hold on a second, okay? So what happened was, I booked this IBM commercial, and I go, I'm gonna have a dinner with my agent and my manager. I didn't invite Amy, okay? Mm-hmm. Which was the wrong thing to do, right? And I wasn't leaving for another couple of weeks, right? So and then two weeks later. Right before I'm going to go, I went to her one man, one woman show or something, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> and it wasn't at a bar. It was at that show where I turned the corner and she had, because I didn't invite her to, you know what I mean, the, the dinner with my manager agent, she drifted apart mm-hmm. from there. And then she met a guy, right? And I caught her with that guy. Wait, you weren't officially oh. over yet? No, it, it was one of those things that we were sleeping together and all that stuff, but we, we didn't really talk about what we really were. 
Oh, mm. then you could didn't have to invite her to the dinner then if she wasn't. No, your... at, at that point I should have because we were an, an item. Okay, you're being a little bit with fuck boy and vague with your answers. Were you or were you not? Was it just a situation? <laughs> Next video. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. I would say about two years ago. Wait, this guy my looks wife like me. Had planned you know, same nose. A surprise LA trip uh, for Valentine's Day. We went in the room. Um, had some ideas what we were going to do. And then right before we were about to leave, she gives me my gift. Um, it was in a little box. And there were these bud chocolates. Like it looked like marijuana, but they were chocolates, which was dope. And then the second surprise was two tickets to see Bobby Lee on Valentine's Day at the comedy store. And me being a comedy fan it was like a dream come true actually going to the comedy store and experiencing it and seeing the names up on the wall and um like even now i, I miss it even only being there once and I, I miss it you know um but that was my valentine story the bud chocolates oh here it is oh it's so weird is it oh yeah it's not medicated yeah, yeah. sure no, it's, a... it's the one Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way. Who are we going to go see? I'm going to see Bobby Lee. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's nice. You are Korean Elvis. You are the Korean. That's, <laughs> why, Shut I, up. that's why I wanted to show Shut that. Shut the fuck up, all right? Maybe you are Korean And Elvis. you know what you are, babe? You're the uh, Filipino Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you always got a fucking... That's a compliment. I know. Maybe yeah, I am the Filipino it. Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was really nice. That was really sweet. Really nice. I yeah. couldn't stop. I could. He looked so much like me. Like he could be it's a relative. Those, it's one yeah. of those face things. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You know, which comes with people that look like you maybe like me. Maybe is that the thing? Oh. Where people that look like like you and I, maybe you like the way I look, right? Maybe. And maybe because I'm kind of like Jessica. You know what? Oh, That's a very fair, man. fair theory. Right? And then I, I gravitate toward people that look like you, the cross-eyed with the nose. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you got cross-eyed with a nose too, baby. Uh, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe there's something there. You know, that we like that our types of people just like each other. Let me tell you, when you first met Jessica, it was like long lost siblings reunited. Yeah. You guys are the same kind of fiery kind of and you think that's why George also liked Jessica? Yeah. And why George also liked you. Same fascination. Wow. But where let's be clear. Jessica Gilbert is walk? like half your size and like 90 pounds. With long hair and way more attractive. Whoa. See, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you would throw that in there. See, that's funny, guys. Yeah, that's comedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Okay? Also, a few, you. Key, Happy Valentine's a few key differences. <laughs> yeah. Project manager for, you know... Um, NASA, you know what I mean? Very, very organized, very on top of her game. Pioneer in the industry. <laughs> oh, very similar to you, a pioneer. Korean Elvis, babe. Mm. Anyway, any... Unhelpful advice? Any other? Yes, let's do an unpo uh, unhelpful advice. Babe, let's connect. No, but you attack. <laughs> you can attack and then connect. Let's connect. No, 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 we'll connect later. Give me... All right, here. Maybe for real. All right here. Okay. You guys good? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's up, Slut Kingdom? I've always had a pretty quiet sex life. I lost my virginity at 19, and now, now turning 25, I've only slept with four women, three of them one-time things, and the other just twice. I suffer from anxiety issues and struggle to get or maintain a healthy relationship with women I'm attracted to. The women I've been with all have been my type but are out of my league. Combining with the lack of my experience, this has made me feel inadequate in the bedroom and caused my anxiety to get the better of me. This has meant I've always taken too long to ejaculate no matter how good the oh, sex okay. has been. I'm usually a bit of a hopeless romantic, but I've considered putting myself out there on dating apps to gain some experience and confidence with whoever is willing, but I'm not sure. What do you guys think I should do? Dito Bobby, Dito Kalila. It's funny because, you know... The, we've gotten these types of, uh, you know, questions before, mm -hmm. emails. 
and they're generally the same age, right, in their 20s. Mm -hmm. and, and the answer always is you just join the club. I mean, we, I was in that pocket as well, you know? And it's like, it's what defines you, what you do after this, okay? And sometimes love rejection and not getting what you want is a motivator, for me at least. It drives me into like just going forward and trying to improve my situation, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, it's a good thing that, you know, right now you haven't found that person. And because what happens? A lot of times, you know, you look you look at these MTV shows, right? Of you know, you know, kids getting pregnant under sixteen. What's that show called? Sixteen and pregnant. Sixteen and, pre 16 and pregnant, right. right? No, it's Teen Mom. Or whatever it might be, right? You see, like in the Midwest, young people in their early twenties, they get married, have family right away, yeah. and all of a sudden, the guy's forced into like having some job that he doesn't want to do, like he's fucking. You know what I mean, throwing hay. Or, it's a good job. It's, it's a great job. I'm just saying. It. I know, but that's what if his dream is to become, you know, what I mean, an astrophysicist or something. You know what I mean? I think they do that in the Midwest too, babe. No, I'm just. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is that oh God, you're not supposed to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that you know, um, having children or having finding the loved one early on isn't necessarily a good thing to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and just for you to carve out, you know what I mean, your destiny and your future, and 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 and. Exploring the world, you know what I mean, is more important than all that other shit. And let me tell you from experience, j just because somebody has fucked a lot of chicks does not make them a great lover. Um, yeah. A lot of times it's usually, here's, I'll give you a little bit of advice in that, or at least a girl like me. If you're insecure about having no sexual prowess or not having a lot of experience, like the one thing that I really love is when guys ask me what I like. Because every person that you come across, what may thrill another one woman may be hated by another. So it's really just like asking like, hey, like how can, you know, what do you, what do you like? How do you like it? You can't go wrong with that. And, and it, it's going to change for every person mm -hmm. that you're with. Because um, with him, for instance, I had to learn that like, he was just going to be a fucking bottom bitch forever. <laughs> oh. oh, God, take that out. That's so mean. <laughs> no, keep it in. I like being a bottom bitch. I like being a bottom bitch. Keep it in. Stop saying Would, that. Power bottom then. I should say power bottom. No. I'm a slow bottom. <laughs> All right. You know, babe, that's not yeah. true. You were an extremely fast bottom. You ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta. Uh, okay, let me say something. Okay. Quick bottom, yeah. I used to have a roommate. And a, a friend, I used to my still my friend. His name is Calisto Hernandez. Oh, okay, poor George. <laughs> no, don't cut him out. But you have to. Why? You I'm say, gonna say good things about him. Oh, okay. Okay. He still lives in Silver Lake, right? And so um, I knew him in my early twenties. Just listen to me, okay? Yeah. Calisto Hernandez. Look him up. He's in a band. I don't know what it's called. But Hernandez was. Um, he's Hispanic, right? Very handsome. There's just something about them. That just women just liked. Mm -hmm. You know who he looks like is Richard Ramirez. <laughs> okay, I'm so tired of people saying that Richard Ramirez was attractive. He had fucking he had the most fucked up mouth, and maybe it's just my fixation yeah, in oral hygiene, and that's like taking me out of it. He but didn't I, have. I know, but imagine Richard Ramirez, right? He if he wasn't, he had therapy, so he wasn't like a serial killer, right? He and had, then he and he also was friends with or, or an orthodontist. He had, he has like, <laughs> right. If those two things, if he had a best friend that was a therapist and a best friend that was an orthodontist, then he would have been a fucking killer in, in the, in the, okay. In, Gilbert, you know what? That angle really, really does not help my point here because that was a great, yeah, I, I, angle. I put, I put the first one. I was like, okay, he looks like a model. Show me the teeth. No, give Show, me, no, give me the model one. Fucking Here, razor give me the model one. I'll give you both. Here's the model one. He has razor clamps. For okay. Teeth. No, just based on that. Okay? Yes. Good lips. Okay. Good okay. profile. Based on that, right. Okay, I'm gonna put Kalisto. I would if he, if I didn't know that he was a murderer, yeah. right? I would probably suck that guy's penis. Okay. Okay. Did you? Suck yeah, he looked like a model would version of this guy. There we go. Yeah. There we that go. Guy yeah. Your penis. I would have him suck my penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Grind it. <laughs> Grind it. Okay. You know how Richard Ramirez, like his thing was, he liked to see the fear in people's eyes. Yeah. What would your fear? Oh, yeah. What? It's so different, these two. It's two so different. Yeah, yeah. 
Anywho, Wait, let's, did can he I know, go back to Kalisto? Did he know he was his fit picture was being taken here? Like, who does that? They, yeah, this is a court. This is him in court. Like did, the, has he befriended an orthodontist since? And no, he's not opening his mouth, baby. Dermatologist, because his oh, skin is yeah. impeccable. Also, oh, that photo right there is like in. He, it's a mugshot. Yeah, but who smiles who, like who, that in a mugshot? Who does that in a mugshot? No one's gonna <laughs> do that in a mug, like ah zen. No, like to be mugshots fair. are always. Yeah, but to be fair. Yeah, there we go. Wow. Yeah, so but great. still, without the teeth, he's handsome. I, I, I honestly. Let's go back to Kalisto. Yes, let's go back. Okay. So he kind of looks like the first version of this. Okay. Yeah. That guy. All right. So we, Kalisto was a kind of guy where. I'm not kidding you. We would walk into a bar. And women would walk up to him, not even introduce themselves, and start making out with him. Oh, did I? Maybe I might have. Did he ever go to? <laughs> Oh, and I'm, I'm being serious. Did he ever go to your rustic? <laughs> Maybe. What about, yes. What about the Virgil? Yes. Because I definitely have ran my fingers through a very uh, Richard Ramirez type. Like I ran my fingers oh through my someone's God. hair. Oh my God. That would be, that would be a nightmare. And I randomly made out. It's the only guy I've ever walked up to and made out with. Oh my God. Are you fucking going to be a nightmare? That would be a nightmare. But anyway, so he was that type of guy. Okay. <laughs> And imagine me, I couldn't get anybody to yeah. even say hello. So I'm walking in with, you know, my friend Kalisto. Women are making out with them. And then I'm like, I'm the guy at the jukebox looking through the, like, songs. <laughs> You've done it three times already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I'm also the guy that puts the coins in. Who does that? The only person I'm putting saying. coins in. I'm going, okay, D12, you two, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever it might be. So that's it's, all I did, too. That's what I did, right? And then here's the second thing I would do. I would go and i go, hi, I wonder if they had that, um, that, um, that game, you know, on the on the bar where you can the photos were like check out the differences. Mm. So I would be the guy just all night playing that game, <laughs> right? It's like circling or whatever. Like it's so sad. So, um, but I used to live with Kalisto, right? And we used to have these thin walls, right? And every night would be a different woman, right? And it would be this is I swear to God this is what the sex. Oh yeah, uh, uh, this is right when I said oh yeah uh, yeah oh. oh. That's it, <laughs> and that you would hear the girl go. That's it, and he's oh, no. sleeping. <sighs> so I don't think that he was good in the bed. And then, like, I would sometimes see the women in the kitchen and just go, "That's it." You know what I mean? That's what he did. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, and number two, he Kalisto too. Uh, oh God! Okay, stop saying his name because <laughs> first you said we can keep his name in because you're gonna say something nice about him. Yeah, I am saying nice. We. Wait, 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 he was he was a talent I'm, I'm not done talking so also the listen here's how I met Kalisto right in my early 20s I'll tell you after this story how I met Kalisto oh <laughs> did you really meet him no, no. Okay. I don't know so no I don't know we're oh. unsure. we don't know that you said he used to go to the Eurustic yeah, yeah, yeah and one time I randomly made out with a guy like that looks like that on, in, at the oh, Eurustic if that happened though Oh my god, it would break my mind. But then heart. afterwards, I made sure because I, I sometimes I get blurry vision when I drink. So I asked Jessica afterwards. I was like, "Hey, dude, was he hot?" She was like, "Dude, he was ugly as shit." <laughs> so it couldn't have been Kalisto if he was in, in fact good looking. Because okay. Jessica has confirmed I have. Sometimes I just go for it. I uh, like my uggos. Okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> the way I met Kalisto, he was an actor at um. Balboa Theater, like at the Globe, like mm -hmm. he was a legitimate actor, and I went and saw his plays, and he was singing and dancing on stage. It was like a big production, you know. It was beautiful, right? He's a great musician, right? He's a, he's in a band, right? He does so many things, but he's the type of guy that would do twelve things at one time. Like I paint, mm -hmm. right? I act. I'm in a band. I do all these things, and I used to tell him. I used to go, you first of all, you. You drink too much, right? And also, you you just, you're just you get way too much pussy, right? Because most of your time is gav ga gavalanting around town. You know what I mean trying to get women, right? And you're not focusing on one craft. Whereas when I was living with them, all I did was stand up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wrote jokes, went to coffee shops. I was living in Silver Lake with them, and this uh, uh, sometimes I would play video games with my brother. But it's like you know I would you know focus on one thing. And I used to tell him, focus on one thing, but he wouldn't. So I think that him getting a lot of women, right, right, um, fucked him up. 
You know Actually. what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening to uh, Tiger Belly. We'll see you the next time. Shout out to Kalisto. <laughs> Shout out to Kalisto. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed that Valentine's Day week special. What a what an interesting one. It's always it's always crazy when it's just Bobby and Kalila and their own thoughts with no guests to interrupt it. Is it not, George? <laughs> yes, it is. It's just uh, it's just funny the deep dives of like. Let me, I think he did Inception five times. When I take a step back again from what just happened, and I take a step back of that, and take another step back, am I a good person? Yes, yes you are. are. And I didn't get last place. That's good. Isn't that great? We both didn't get last place. <laughs> Shout out to us. And uh, George, where can we go watch that footage they've been talking about? Uh, Patreon.com slash Tigerbelly. Cool, guys. And uh, yeah, be on the lookout. That is going to be starting up a little fun cooking competition we'll be doing on there. And also, uh, we'll be concluding our singing competition uh this past week, Bobby and Claudia got to actually talk to some of the folks uh, that competed and uh, submitted videos, so that was really fun. So just check that out for vlogs and all your other uh, Tiger Belly um, extra bonus content over at patreon.com slash Tiger Belly. Also, guys, I want to thank our sponsors, Roman, for a limited time. Get up to $35 off your first month of ED treatment. Just go to getroman.com slash belly to get started. That's getroman.com slash belly. And also, get started today at stitchfix.com slash belly, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. If you want to start living a happier life today as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp.com slash Belly. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Belly. And also HelloFresh, guys. Try America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 10Belly. Use the code 1010Belly, B-E-L-L-Y, for 10 free meals. George, do it. You're having a child soon. You don't have time to cook. Get it. Absolutely. Uh, George, boom. Chiba boom, George. Oh, why didn't I grab one for me? I don't know why. You're literally in the wide. Boom, guys. What I'm holding right here has been in the works for so long because the pandemic decided to slow everything down. And that's okay, guys, because here at Tiger Belly, we push through. We have the official Tiger Belly playing cards. Oh, when do those come out, Gil? These will be out soon actually soon. <laughs> i don't want to put a date i just want to say a lot sooner than you think and guess what guys not only is this dropping this item um there's going to also be some other merch on there as well that uh you might want to pick up as well some uh classic reprints where we only did a few and we're only doing a few again so guys there's going to be another merch drop coming in the next i would say four to six weeks Maybe sooner. Who knows? Just make sure you're following our social media so you know when that happens. Also, I'm just waiting for the unboxing. You're just going to sit there with it all. Uh... I can't. My hands have a, a lotion. Okay. Okay, they don't. And next week, we'll open it for you guys, and you'll get to see one all card right. I just per feel week. so far. Can, I get clo can we get closer on this? What is this? All right. Oh, it is close. That's a, that's a zoom lens. That's uh, just the cards, Gilbert. George doesn't trust me. He's triple master on me, guys. All right. So we have this amazing custom Tiger Belly sticker. You peel that off. Or take a little uh, envelope knife, which I wish I had. I don't want to break this. Boom. See, George, that's why we don't do unboxings. Boom. Guys, these are high-quality cards. This is not some, like, small product we were Ooh, like... look at that joker there. Oh, that's why he won the damn unboxing. The first card, everyone. George, here. Show, show people what this is. No, no, I'm... A... No, it's closer. Show, show people. They need to see that. Uh, it's, it's focused right on you, Gilbert. Oh, my God. Guys, check this out. The Joker card is yours truly. The only person actually in the deck. Show them Bobby's photo so no, no, we no, get no, some no, sales. No, 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 Gilbert, we want no. some sales people here. Show them. No, people need to know George's notes he had on this. Me, Bobby Cloud, don't even have our name on it. He's the only one with his full name in the deck. It says George Kim underneath. Okay, that just went from uh, we just sold selling one. out to selling one to my mom. Guys, we have Thanks, some, I... Let me show you this. Let me show you. Let's go to the order of the least important. Then you get your Jack. You got your Gilbo Jack. You got that large-ass Eddie Bravo head. I still don't understand the comparison, guys. Someone please explain it to me. Uh, we also got the... Um, well, there's some... Sorry, I'm focused. It's focused on your head, so just hold it beside your head. Boom. Kalila, your Queen Coloco queen card. Boom. Like that, George? You got that? And everyone's different. Now, we also got the one and only Slep King card with the yellow Gucci glasses, your friends. Guys... Do not want to get a Royal Flush with these cards. That's insane. And throw away the Jokers. This is your chance, guys. Tiger Belly playing cards. They've been in production for almost five months. Such a high-quality box. Uh, so many little like details here um, on the back. It even says RIP Dad. 
Rest in peace, Papa. A uh, little nice touch. And uh, yeah, the artist, uh, Jay Raws, amazing. Amazing artist. We thank him so much. Uh, he also does a lot of art for uh, a lot of the MMA brands, so uh, check him out. All right, guys. Well, uh, George, any other announcements you want to make or any shout-outs for any of your peoples in your life, in your world? People that deserve a shout-out? People? Oh, there's so many, but I'm forgetting right now. I, uh... So many. Uh, anything, George? I'm, this is literally, George, I'm literally giving you the platform. No, I got to get home to my wife, you know? We, uh... And there you go. Doesn't care about other people. Wait. Only about his wife. I'm just kidding. That's great. Uh, we love you guys so much. On behalf of the Tiger Belly team, uh, I'm Gilbert. Uh, make sure you follow Kali Like Calamity K, Bobby at Bobby Lee Live, George at George underscore Kimmel. And if you are a sponsor and you're listening to this, you hit up your boy Gilbert and George so we can take care of that. Let's get you on here. Let's get you, let's get your, your product seen on the Tiger Bells. So uh, we love you guys so much. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs> Peace.